Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tio No, the Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolover, and right now we need to talk about the state of the district. Pavel Batov sat in his office chair, happy to finally get some peace and quiet. A lot had changed in the past few years, and he had seen himself jump from general all the way to becoming marshal of the West Siberian district. With the new responsibilities came new challenges as well. The unification of a region that had remained divided for a decade wouldn't be easy. Administrating a region five times larger than what was previously controlled by the military district proved to be a real challenge for the district's garrisons of Batov's rule. Yet that wasn't even half of what he had on his hands. Administrating was one thing, integrating areas controlled by different warlords was very different, with very different ideologies from ours, was no easy feat, and Batov knew. A lot of hard work had to be put in before West Siberia can truly appear unified. As well as a difficult p political position, Batov also faced the problems of a destroyed economy. West Siberia had been wrecked by the constant war since the last decade. Large funds would need to be put into reconstruction so our economy can even compare to our rivals on our borders. As well as all the problems of uniting West Siberia had also brought to the table. The democratic movement led by Yeltsin has also been gaining more and more support. The people will begin to favor a more democratic government as the region stabilizes. And elections may need to occur if Batov wants to move forward into a democratic government or legitimize his rule. Lastly, the death of Marshal Rokosovsky has put a lot of pressure on B himself. He would have to work in the legacy of Rokosovsky to finally take control of West Siberia and strengthen the district enough to finally reclaim all of Russia. There was a lot Batov had to do if he wanted to be the second great marshal, but he had to start somewhere. The marshal's legacy is in his hands now. Uh, as you can tell by the number on this episode, it is 3A, in which we're going down a particular way, and the people of Russia are gearing up for an election season. An idea once unthinkable scant decades before, now it is up to the Russian people to decide the fate of their nation and their leaders. Political parties, both big and small, are preparing their supporters and their backers across the nation. Thousands of volunteers, campaign staff, and candidates make ready to depart to the rallies, tours, speeches, and debates that will dominate the headlines for the coming months. Candidates will be scrutinized, issues debated, and at its end, millions of voters will be able to make their voices heard by the powers that be. The LPR, which is the Conservative Party under Yeltsin, for Better Russia, or the Army and the Rodina, for the UKGS, which is for Abatov. So for this one, because this is, I'm splitting this campaign into two basically at this point, we're going to go for the army and continue with Batov for now, even though I guess technically the anarchists did kind of unite these guys over here, but we'll see what happens. Now that's kind of weird. Yagoda versus the anarchists. Wow. But anyway, so since we want to go the UKGS first for now, we want to greatly increase their popularity in all states. Which does give us more political power, which is nice. Our nation is not yet in a safe enough position to begin implementing democracy. The warlord era of Russia may be coming to a close, but Russia is far from unified. The large super states that have arisen from the ashes of the USSR are just as dangerous, if not more so, than any threat we faced before. While we certainly support the system on principle, for the sake of the people, we cannot allow military rule to end. If that means playing dirty in this upcoming referendum, so, then so be it. So now we have a lot of decisions to uh, strengthen our party's position. Deal with the remaining... Oh, look at this! So, for this time, instead of doing focuses to reduce administrative strain, which we might still be able to do, but if you spend political power, you can do it like this. You lose daily political power, but to reduce the strain on the budget... Oh, I'm going to do that immediately. Yeah, that's really good. Um, in the northern Siberian states, uh, we're not looking too good. Over in western Siberia, we're still not looking super great. And trans we're looking actually fairly okay. So, let's do western Siberia. Campaign, oh wow, trans Urals, oh, Urals, Urice. Okay, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. suppress op opposition voting, decrease the opposition voters turn on all sides. Is that a good thing to do? Hmm, limit LPR campaigning. Removed, remove decision. Well, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do Western Siberia and see what happens. Because right now, last time we literally unified. And, oh, are we... Oh, status of the district. We're still hunting them down, huh? I thought we got rid of them. What kind of sucks? And they're doing that in campaign, too. Oh, uh, we got re reunification of Russia here. But we're not going to really do anything about that. And we have regional development as well. Stability, manpower, weekly manpower. I'd love to do this one. But let's save our PP for now, at least for now. Also, we're spending... We're not getting down military spending, but we are increasing civilian spending. I'd like to do this one, too. But I want to see how much more PP we're going to need. Eh, maybe we'll do it once. Maybe we'll do it once. There you go. Costs a little bit more, but... Hopefully we can build a little bit faster than this. But, after the army knows best, deciding the future. Our polling update. 
Polling in Russia is an imperfect art and an unfortunate consequence of the destruction and turmoil of decades past. Yet, the introduction of democracy to a large population has been brought with it quick development in the field. Monthly and weekly polls conducted by newspapers and new polling organizations have allowed campaigns, candidates, and the wider public to measure the popularity of candidates and their ideas. While struggling to balance bias, location, underrepresentation, and many other matters of concern, polling remains the only way to gauge com campaigns performance until the ballots are cast on election day. Oh, time to check in on the horse race. Oh, that's cool. We're not even done with the focus, so we'll see what happens. I'm not really too concerned about it right now. And there you go. I'll split these guys up. We have these guys are, I think, 20 combo with. Uh, we actually might want to make them 40 combo with. We might have enough army XP for that. And we have three things of 20 combo, well, almost 20 combo with motorized, as well as three things of 20 combo with tanks. So not too bad, actually. Right now, uh, let's do this. I just make them 40s. I forgot to make them 40s already. So there you go. 40s are down here. Go high. Thank you. And then go boom. And then go boom. And then go boom. 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 Actually, a lot of you guys are already elite. It doesn't really matter to me, I'll be honest. It really doesn't matter at all. And there you go. Just in case for the future. <clears throat> for the future. Suppression. Is that good? I don't know. That seemed kind of corrupt to me. Suppress opposition voting seems fairly corrupt. So I don't want to do that. I greatly increase our popularity in all states. Anyways, remove no voting. We get more political power, lose some stability, get more authoritarian democracy. Deciding the future. The day of the referendum is abroad. Men and women across the nation mark time with bated breath as they await the results. Labors from the factories and mindset at the bars, drinks in hand, listening intently for what the radio announcer has to say. A group of young students waits in the Capitol Square for the inevitable announcement on the loudspeakers. Soldiers in the barracks sit in the group, patiently waiting for the captains to return from high command and bring them the news. A nation sits on edge as the government bureaucrat tallies the votes and recognizes a victor to be who? Weak, strong, 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 significant, very strong, weak, weak. Um, what we want to do, we did Western Siberia. Maybe we'll do Northern Siberia next. Actually, we're pretty strong and moderate already, but they're moderate and significant, so. We'll try that one. Oh, and we can do this as well. We probably want to keep doing this stuff, too. Oh, here we go. Trial of Lazar Kaganovich. Yeah, I'll do that one. And... I'm not sure... I guess we keep doing this until all this stuff is gone. So let's do the... Actually, no, let's keep focusing on the Black League Remnants. That's what we were doing the entire time, so. What is the strain on our budget like? Not good. It's really not good, but it's already improving already, so that's pretty nice. We were 9, now we're 16. Better agricultural methods. If you like to hear about this, please go right ahead. For this bread, we thank thee. Very nice. And now we're at 19. Not bad. Actually, what's that level we're at right now? We just went up to mass mechanization. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. Pulling update. There we go. Every own state. What's going to happen? The Soviet Federation of Western so Western Russia unifies West Russia. Okay. So, call me one. How many times do you guys see Comey winning? winning? And they're led by Zidanev. What the heck? I need to play Zidanev someday. The West is ours. I definitely need to play him. I have to play him someday. But now let's see how much he struggles with getting Onega. Cool. The 66 election results. <clears throat> Campaigning for the elections have ended. And today is when the voting will begin. Polling stations have been set up in every city across West Siberia, and once the voting is completed, West Siberia will finally have an undisputed leader. Some have worried that Batov, using his power, would turn the election in his favor. However, it does not appear that way, as the voting seems to be pretty fair across the board, at least in the terms of a newly founded democracy. While some have complained the government has not gone far enough to implement a fair democracy, both still have a chance to win. There's no expecting who will come out on top. However, if Yeltsin does win, there's no expectation of the military just giving up control of the country. Batov and his army will try to keep as much influence as possible in West Siberia, no matter who wins. At least there are elections and victory for the Marshal. Uh, Marshal Pavel Batov in the army cried the radio announcer, having secured enough votes in the referendum. Batov shut his shortwave receiver off and looked out of the city below him. Even with the army's underhanded tactics, he, didn't have, he hadn't been sure that they would take the vote. The people have this ridiculous fascination with democracy that he couldn't get out of his head wrap his head around. Now, of all times, the people would rather be headed by some fool with no knowledge of military strategy rather than the generals that have guided the nation successfully for years. Yeltsin couldn't lead an army out of a paper bag, let alone against Germany. It couldn't be allowed to occur, especially with their enemies amassing on the border. The marshal's getting worked up now, as he often got about politics. However, his thoughts were interrupted by a light shining into his eyes from the streets below. He took a closer look, only to see a small boy pushing a cart on the street below, selling small baked potatoes. The cart was a large thing with a metal sign out front reflecting light onto his window. The poor boy could barely push it. Batov's eyes softened, and he's leaning back in his chair. All he did, he did for the Russian people. And they would understand that in the end. And look at this. 
10 to 6, 1 to 0, 1 to 0, 3 to 1, 5 to 3, 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 43 to 1 in Svedlosk. 41 to 1, 41, 4 to 1, 12 to 22, 1 to 0, 0 to 1. Nice. So we actually basically doubled their score. Nice. And election polling. Oh, it's very weak. Uh, I guess we've already won, so it doesn't even matter. So goodbye. And now. Oh, so now we unlock the rest of the street. Safeguarding the people. Ooh, power to the Council of Generals. We get more political power. I like that. Ease this stuff. Reduce the strain. We can still rebuild the district and the Grand Russian Army. And reaching out would be nice. I definitely want to do all this stuff. But, oh, we go, to, we go straight to war economy. Okay. Huh. We can only get 0.31 political power every single day. This will all... We're going to do the second, but the guiding hand of the marshal. The armor under P Marshal Pavel Batov has managed to secure victory in the elections with the army's hold over the government secured. Marshal Batov will continue to lead the district to more victories against those who threaten Russia and her people. War plans are being reviewed and revised. Military research funding is to be doubled, alongside the budget of the military itself. Under our marshal's guidance, the district will prosper and expand. Soon we may be even be able to call ourselves Russia. Actually, we might as well keep doing that too. Or the trial of Lazar Kaganovich. He... Kaganovich slowly stepped into the courtroom, guarded by two burly soldiers holding much more weaponry than probably necessary. He sat down in a small wooden chair, probably made uncomfortable on purpose. The military judge looked down, frowning at the old man in the seat below him, who looked so small and frail. Lazar Kaganovich, the results of your trial have been concluded. After liberation, you are to be sentenced to execution for your betrayal of Russia and her people. Execution? Betrayal? Kaganovich was too angry to take it anymore. He was no traitor. Getting out of his chair and angrily pointing his wrinkled finger at the judge, he began a tirade. No, you are the traitors. You were in my military. You fought for socialism and the motherland. Now look at where you're at. You are nothing but evil, fascist, and dirty capitalists. I should have purged Rokosovsky when I had the chance. Sit down, Kaganovich, the judge shouted. We have come upon our decision, and it is final. You are the only man to blame for leading West Siberia down this dark path. You are your own understanding, or undoing. You'll see, Kaganovich said bitterly, the revolution will be achieved one way or another. Soon all who stand in the way of socialism will fail. If I'm not there to see it happen, then so be it. Send him to a cell. The revolution ended or delayed? Hunt down, uh, Yazov. Hmm. And there they go, fighting Onega. Cool. Up next, let's actually read about the next one. Ease martial law. Get more political power and reduces the strain on our budget. <clears throat> which is better than getting more political power right now. The reaction of many of our recent laws and proclamations have been rather negative. Many of our citizens have been growing increasingly angry about what we've done since assuming power, and some of our citizens are even resorting to violence. In order to quell the public outrage and perhaps ease tensions with the citizenry... Uh, and the military government will be easing martial law and late-night curfew restrictions immediately, with a plan to eventually phase out these laws altogether. Hopefully such measures will succeed in calming the people, and will make a more violent response unnecessary. They get slightly more political power, even though we lose stability, but it is what it is. Safeguarding the people, very nice. Let's come over here too. And let's go ahead and click on this one. Marshal Batov waited near the microphone, ready for his voice to be projected across all of the Ural military district. He cleared his throat as he was given the signal to begin. Citizens of the district, I, Marshal Batov, have a very important announcement. <clears throat> Since our army has gained control over the entire region of West Siberia, partisans and resistance fighters continue to harm our garrisons in enforcing the areas in these chaotic times. Order needs to be upheld, and the only way to carry it through is through military rule. That is why I'm announcing that the army will continue their occupation of our newly regained territory, and martial law will continue to be in effect in t across the entire district until further notice. I know many of you yearn for your further freedoms, however. Our armed forces are the only ones who can keep you safe. Bandits and partisans will continue to threat, be a threat until the military deals with them, and until they're dealt with. The army will be the guardians of the people. I and every general in this district promise we will do everything we can to keep you and your family safe. All I ask for you is that you follow these orders completely. Remember, the fate of Russia is in all of our hands. We are not the enemy. We do not wish to trample, uh, trample you under the boot of authoritarianism. These orders are not to hurt you, but protect you. I, too, wish we could live in more freer times, but our current situation does not allow that. Thank you for your understanding, and safety is our top priority. Hey, 20 and 8, not bad. I followed up with, of course. Established Council of Generals. Oh, Bandit Hunt, by the way. Bandit Hunt. Gunfire fell the Bandit Hunt. Hideout as Zahar's squadron surrounded the last bandit, not wanting to go down without a fight. This bandit hideout has been troublesome for the district, raiding villages and farms across its territory. It had taken Zahar's troops months to crack it down in a fight, though. The bandits were no match for the Third Army. Zahar, leaving cover, opening fire once again. A hit! The bandit went down, blood splattering across the walls. That was the last of them. Most of the bandits surrendered on sight, not wishing to fight more heavily armed Third Army. Those who fought back had gotten what they deserved. 
Ordering his men to clear out the bodies and the wounded, Zahar scanned the rest of the rooms once more time just to make sure no bandits were left hiding. There are no bandits left. But Zahar did find a lot of valuables. Jewelry, money, precious vases, and even a few paintings littered to the rooms to the bandits. One thing stood out to him though, a doll. Probably belonging to a young girl. Where were the bandits were the bandits really that cheap? Just taking a doll from a little girl? Well, he knew his men would love to keep all the riches to themselves, the third army had a duty, and it was to serve the Russian people. Some of these were probably the only precious goods some people owned. Zahar would make sure that they would return to the rightful owners no matter what. Especially that doll. The third army exists to protect the people, not to rob them. The trial of Yazov. Yazov was thrown into a chair in the courtroom, looking up as a judge with a bloody nose and a bruised eye. The murderer finally arrives at my doorstep to confess for his heinous crime, said the military judge, frowning. Dmitry Yazov, my fellow judges and I have completed our deliberation, and with a unanimous decision, you are sentenced to death. Your execution by firing squad will be denied. Guards, get this worthless man out of my sight. The judge finished his last sentence quickly, not wanting to look at Yazov any longer. Do you want, not want to hear my last words, Yazov said, not caring he was going to be killed soon? After all, he had expected nothing else. Fine, what nonsense do you have to say, the judge asked, seeming not to care. I just wanted to ask if you would be ready to face the coming ordeals, Yazov said coldly. You have eliminated your only chance at a victory, General. With the Black League destroyed, you have destroyed all of Russia's chances with it. Only I could have led Russia through the coming storm, though through the great trial itself. Now Russia will only see failure and disunity. Do you really think a state with any semblance of democracy can stand united and strong against an enemy such as Germany? The judge paused for a moment after Yazov was done speaking, shaking his head. No, no, no. You are the one who is wrong. Do you not see yourself as a murderer? A brute who has put a dark stain on Russia? If you were to lead a great nation, you would have destroyed it as well as Germany. Perhaps Yazov began to smile, but Russia would finally have its revenge. Take him away, the George ordered. And as the guards went to haul Yazov away one more time, he looked at Dmitry Yazov's dark eyes and would never forget them for the rest of his life. A monster finally put down. Even the greatest leaders can't run a nation by themselves. A council of generals is to be established with the purpose of both advising the marshal and help carrying out his directives both on the front lines and in the government. These generals will serve as a secondary purpose. They will act as a check on the marshal's power, which is a good thing. Should he ever begin making erratic decisions or begin taking actions against the stability or benefit of the district, they will act and remove him as head of government. Hopefully the situation never degrades to such a point, but should it occur, we will be prepared. <clears throat> the end of the election season, which already ended earlier. The people of Russia decided. The last of the ballots have been counted, and the winners of the 66th election decided. The victors have, begun make, have made their speeches, thanked their voters, and have begun to focus energies towards the task of governance. <clears throat> Reporters and journalists have returned to the regular cr crime, scandal, and fluff pieces pushed aside during the election. Party machines have begun shutting down, ads removed, and the campaign posters and items put in storage for future use. Soon the campaign will become a distant memory, something for historians and political strategists to look back on, the on in the future. After all, the plans are already being drawn for the next election cycle for whenever the whole process begins again. Candidates and voters, you've done Russia proud. It sounds like that one's just been replaced with the United States one, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Not too much debt yet, but we're going to rack up that number as high as we can, right? Actually, I don't mind maybe getting a thing of rubber. Let's get one rubber. Oh, there goes that part of Muscovine. Hey, the second African war. Hey, Zimbabwe's there. And there goes Onega. Cool, so at least this way we're making some more planes. <clears throat> I want to make sure we got more than enough plans, and I apologize for my coughing, so... I do apologize for that. Even though we have five factories on fighters, five factories on cast, so that's all really good stuff. 3.11 billion? Oh well. We're gonna build, 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 and actually, can we... Oh! Okay, so, we had the thing there about removing bandits and lowering administrative strain, but once we dig out both guys, it's gone. Oh, look at that! That's a lot better than it used to be. Only political power loss, supply consumption, and stability? That's not too bad, but a return to normalcy. Svedlovsk has become a new city after the military had restored order across all of Western Siberia and the Urals. With the city changed, Catherine's had too. What once was a city entirely controlled and scheduled by the military had become freer and seemingly more liberated. With the communist and black league threats squashed, the military no longer had to take control of every citizen's lives. To Catherine, that meant everything. Back in the days of the Union, when the Catherine was just a young girl, she still lived in Svedlovsk, and free with no responsibilities. After the collapse, though, life became hard, working hours for just small portions of food for her children, and ordered by the military what time she was allowed to leave her home, she could barely handle it. Now with the martial law over and the curfews ended, Catherine could finally live life to the fullest. She could even go outside at night and see the stars. While the military presence was still there, things had turned out for the better. Perhaps more freedom still stood on the horizon. A Svedlovsk, a free woman, a meaningful life. Eight-hour workday. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. Calm their fears. I like that one too. Russian stratocracy. Ooh, that's actually pretty good too. 
Yeah, let's do that one. Army professionalism. Our governmental administration is a prime example of the efficiency of the military. Our soldiers are regimented within an inch of their lives during their service and what kept that regimented altitude about life when they leave. These men become warriors, brave and unafraid to do what needs to be done in the moment. Our military boards are the cream of the crop and prove how effective and trustworthy they are in government. Surely it makes sense to reserve certain positions in government for the former military personnel, but by ensuring that important government governmental positions go to those who have served in some capacity, we ensure both the efficiency and legitimacy of the government. Hiding election results. Um, I guess if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. It, it seems kind of generic, so there you go. A lost soul. It was a bright, windy day in the city of Omsk, a former dark heart of the Black League. Marshal Pavel Batov stood before a particularly elaborate headstone with his own entourage. Taking a moment to examine the structure, leave me, he said quietly, I will only be a minute. As his companions left his side, he, he moved closer to the grave and knelt down in front of the inscription. Dmitry Mihailovich Karbyshevsky, or Karbyshevsky, Karbyshev. 1880-1963. Reading the name already caused a wave of the memories to wash over the marshal's mind. General Karbyshev was at one time a man who considered a comrade during the Great Patriotic War, but Todd would never ever consider, once consider the possibility that a man like Karbyshev was capable of taking arms against his brothers. And yet here he was, a victim of his own misguided ambition to strengthen Russia's defenses, even if it cost him his soul. Perhaps in the end it did. But Batov was feeling a bit curious mixture of sadness and regret. He was there when Karbyshev's mind began to drift into dark places, and he was there when the old general began to act upon his sordid thoughts. He could have tried to stop him, make an attempt to steer his comrade back onto the right path, but it was far too late for that now. Karbyshev, as well as the monster that he had perhaps unwittingly created, was dead, and all Batov could do now was hope that he was able to finally find peace in the afterlife. After placing an old medal that once belonged to the late general at the base of the headstone, he, the marshal stood and gave his final goodbyes to his old comrade turned adversary. If it only hadn't come to this. How unfortunate, my friends. Unfortunate. Uh, keep building across the bay. They just don't know. They don't grow them like they used to, don't they, Dima? Kuzma Galitsky muttered as he cracked the sunflower seeds in his bowl. Dmitry Lelyushenko sitting beside him. Work was over, but the two had extra business to finish that evening, and both found themselves in empty break rooms taking a short leave from the papers. Yeah, when I was a kid, I remembered they used to be saltier. Leshyushenko replied, taking a handful for himself. I grew up in Rostov, that's where they grew all the sunflowers, you know, so we kind of got familiar with them. And these are not the ones I grew up with. Galetsky blinked, you're from Rostov? Yeah. Uh, the other dude replied before pausing too, don't tell me you're from Rostov too. Actually, I'm from Taganrog, Galetsky. You know that small town across the bay? Really, my dad had a co-worker from Taganrog. He used to give me treats on weekends when I was a kid. Leshyushenko answered back. How are you kidding? My uncle worked in Rostov. He took the ferry and always brought back spare candy with him. The two generals laughed as they re reminisced about their childhood. However, an unnatural silence grew in the empty room. They're probably dead, aren't they? My dad, your uncle, everyone. The cross must have wiped them, Leshenko said after a long pause. The pause settled in once again before Galitsky replied in turn. This is why we fight, isn't it? This is why we fight. Hmm. My bad, I forgot about research. Oh, well, that was only one day. Uh, so that's not too bad. 65. We need to do that one stuff. We need more resources as well. Um, artillery. We well, yeah, let's get better artillery first, though. We could definitely use that. Stratocracy. Thank you very much. What well, with entitlement benefits? It's not bad. It's full pensions. Poverty. Let's get better. I like that one too. Rewarding the loyal. Um, let's do this one first. Calm their fears. Many of our citizens are so wary of military rule, despite the governmental and military successes of our military administration in the past. We must assuage these fears in the public and assure them that the military knows what's best for the nation, and is actively working towards its betterment. Our propaganda campaign highlighting our military's victories in the years past, coupled with the praise of the military administration's handling of the economy, and general governance should go a long way towards changing the hearts and minds of our citizens on military rule. A lot more stability, more support, political power. Great. Reminiscence. It had been many years since... Hamazast Babadzanian and Ivan the Bagrayumian have been able to pause and think about the past. Both the revisionists and the Black League had made any such pause difficult. There you go. But with both groups scattered and the districts control over Western Siberia consolidated, that they could do so once again. And so they did, sharing a meal and speaking Armenian all the while. As both of them had expected, talk quickly turned to that of their old home, now long lost under occupation. Babadzanian spoke at length of his native village of Chardakili, itself just within the Azeri lands and lying within the Rex Commissariat's territory. Bagramyan listened with interest as though he himself had been born in Yazilavipol. His parents were from the village as well, and he had heard many stories of it. As time passed, however, the conversation progressed from the past to the present, and both men expressed their sadness both at the Chardakili's occupation and the knowledge that they may never again possess the chance to see it. However, 
B man reminded his colleague the district had established itself for a strong base in Siberia and if appropriate strategies were vigorously pursued, could progress to reunite all of Russia. If that happened, the Caucasus could be reclaimed and Chardakili traveled too once again. At that thought, the B man smiled. He informed the other B man that he would, if that every day came, he honored to invite him to his old house and share a similar meal. They shook on that and parted, as both Armenians as friends. One day they will. And try military traditions. Yeah, that's pretty good too. Every hand is useful. Yeah, it's not bad. Cool. And calm their fears. With, I guess we could do benefits. I don't want her GDP yet. Uh, but we do need more monthly poverty change, so. The army always needs more men. As our enemies across the border grow in their army, so too will we. We, in order to increase enlistment, however, we will have to sweeten the deal in order to entice young men to join. The threat of imminent invasion is no longer as easily applicable as a motivator now that our geopolitical situation is stabilized as much as it has. Implementation of a guaranteed pension system for veterans, respect, and the option to be part of the political machine in the district will be just some of the benefits a soldier can reap if they enlist in the army. That surely ought to increase enlistment rates. That's hopefully, hope it does. Nice, we only got one more done. Nice. Now, with 3.1 billion, which is not too much, that's not too bad, actually. That's really not too bad. We could cut military spending, but it's not really that much. It's really not much. Followed up with established provincial military governors. Local lower bureaucrats and neglected governors have been giving our administration a tough time. They've been slow to implement new laws we pass, have directly opposed the ruling military council on various occasions, and have been encouraging anti-military treason. This is a situation which we can no longer be tolerate. From here on out, all provincial governorships and political positions at other administrative subdivisions of government will be filled with military officers as opposed to locally elected leaders or party officials. Actually, we're getting point... Oh, we get actually political power every single day. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty darn good. Look at all this growth we're doing. Oh, society's getting better. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And let's do this one next. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Two days left. We lose some PP, but that's okay. Get more stability, too. The war hero. Old man Pieter. Oh, that's what everyone called him. If someone described an old grizzled veteran, they would be describing Pieter, serving in the Tsar's army and in the Civil War. Pieter has lost a leg in battle, uh, but some say he killed 100 men before he ever was put out of commission. He was also the best man to ask what the army was like, which was exactly what Martin was about to do. A young man, only 18 years old, you would think Martin would know more about war. Martin wanted to join the fight, but he didn't want to be a regular soldier. He wanted to be a hero just like Pieter, killing the Germans and barbarians. The old veteran spent most of his life, or most of his time, in a rocking chair watching the people pass by his old farmhouse. As Martin walked up, the old veteran opened his eyes, saying in a scratchy yet punctual voice, What do you want, boy? I'm trying to catch a nap. Peter, my name is Martin. I'm going to join the army. I want to know how to fight and kill just like you. The old man turned to, uh, turned to look at him. Well, boy, here's step one. Don't. The army isn't for anyone like you. Go back home. The boy stared wide-eyed. What do you mean? You are a soldier hero. People say you killed a hundred enemy soldiers. I'm strong enough to fight. It's not if you're strong enough, boys, shouted Pieter. If you want to be a hero, don't join the army. The only thing you become is a killer or dead. Trust me, if you want to be a hero, just save people. Don't kill them. Martin walked away more confused than other. Why was was Pieter right? Or was he just an angry old man? Were all soldiers really just killers? There are no heroes in war. Well, according to some. And yeah, maybe there's some truth to that, too. Oh, look at that. Factories. Cool. And reward the loyal. How are we going to try to army traditions? But well, I'll give you the loyalty first. Does this help? Oh, I'll announce this one first. Thank you. 4.11 billion? Oh boy. Yeah, this doesn't give you any more like poverty and betterment, but reward the loyal, I guess. Despite our best efforts, there remains a great deal of citizens unhappy with the rule. They argue that such military interference with the government is corrupt, inefficient, and harmful to citizen participation in government. We must show them that this isn't the case at all. Citizens are certainly allowed to participate in government, should they provi prove to be loyal and trustworthy enough, though most major positions will be filled by military men. We will reserve a few token lower-class uh, bureaucracy jobs for the average citizen who hasn't served in order to satisfy the people. Right. Let's at least make sure we're producing all the good stuff that we're actually currently using. We can get those upgrades later on, but at least getting basic artillery, ba basic tanks, stuff like that, that's super important to do, so. And, thank you. Nice. I'm just looking at that one real quick. Oh, well, we can't do that one yet. Well, I guess we do Meaningful Life. The Marshal is a strict, and in some cases, harsh leader, but he's not an apathetic leader. Marshal Batov understands the plight of the common worker as well as, that, as, well as what our nation is fighting for. Effective immediately, a series of regulations and reforms are to be implemented in an industry and across the greater economy, improving working conditions. Specifically, those reforms will center on lowering working hours and some minor safety reforms. In turn, we should also hope to further quell dissent and short support for the military. The marshal's looking out for us, the common man. Come on, keep producing. Helps offset these costs. And then we'll do this one, and then we'll go probably down here or for the greater good. 
Oh, let's do it for the greater good. We won't get more PP. Oh, we get one party state. Well, I guess technically, yeah. You go from controlled opposition to one party state. Every hand is useful? Yeah, I suppose so. We get less cap, but we get more population. Could be worse. And are we on 2%? We're on 4%. Two year draft, technically, and re regional recruitment. Not too bad. 4%, even though it adds up to 2.5%, 2, 2 but effective total manpower is modified to 162%. Cool, I'll do some coffee here to keep us nice and warm as well. Or us satisfied, it's kind of not warm anymore. Every hand is useful. Uh, does that hurt us? Eh, I would do that one. During the early years of Bukharan and the Siberian plan, working conditions were awful. The Communist Party cared little for the safety of its citizens, and industrial accidents were far too common. We, however, are a far more modern and enlightened state which cannot abide by such unnecessary loss. In light of this, the Marshal has greenlit further regulation to improve safety standards and prevent accidents that have all been too common. No man is expendable if we wish to one day rule over Russia. Which is a good thing. And another division for the future. Once we're 24, I might stop making divisions just to make sure that, you know, uh, that we're good and we have enough equipment to make 40 combo wits. For winning the loyal? Aggressive assaulter, yeah. Cool. And for the greater good. Military rule in the government is necessary to save our state from corrupt and ineffective politicians. They failed to protect the nation from dangerous ideologies like Marxism and fascism in the past, and we have no reason to believe that they'll do so in the future. From now on, the government will be controlled solely by the military and armed forces. Free parties willing to undermine our national security are to be banned, while these measures we've implemented may upset some citizens. It's important to remember that all we do, we do for the greater good. Yeah, ooh, military engineering schools, invest in machinery, expanding the bureaucracy, or the bureau, I guess. Party will be can rapidly improve. Nice. Yeah, I'm, we're doing this this part of the tree next. Love it for the greater good. With enshrined army traditions, the third army and its traditions have been instrumental in defeating our enemy so far. The impact that the third army has had not only on our government but on the wider culture of our state at large has been immense. Indeed, it's been these men's courage and discipline that's seen the district through its toughest times, and the people have taken note. We must make sure that our military traditions are respected and better and treated with respect. Too many of our soldiers have seen the comrades die only to be disrespected by some youth on the streets. Our men will get the respect they deserve. Get even more army XP. Oh, good, that's really good. Even better stats. Yeah, we're making ourselves very strong here. 1.17 political power is pretty good too. And the Sentinels of Russia is next. The Marshal has counseled and the army are only thing keeping our state under control under the, from the chaos that rages around us. They have secured us under their guidance. We have seen our nation claim victory in even the most dire times. Now we must do the same for the rest of Russia. Our people are like lie broken and scattered across the Russian wastes, and if they're ever to unify and become whole again, it'll have to be under our rule. We are the sentinels of Russia, those who will safeguard and protect it, keeping watch for all those who would do it harm. We get a hundred more political power. Exert influence in the southern Euros is actually a very, very good thing to do. Um, hopefully we can get them under our boot, I guess you could say. Oh, this is demilitarized, huh? How strong is Zidanev? Because I need to play them again someday, but not that much manpower. He'll probably get more. He has quite a few divisions. He has quite a few, so we can't really cut down on our... Well, we can go for two for now. That's fine. And there you go. Well, there you go. Whatever. I wonder if we can do the next level of this stuff. Screw it. We have so much PP. Let's get some more infrastructure immediately. And then the Sentinels of Russia. Very, very, very good. The Marshal and his council. And then we'll be rebuilding the district after this one. And it's almost 67. Happy almost 67. And here we go. I ask and we shall receive. All right. Let's see. Expertise. Bonus for industry. Facilities. Yes, yes. Agriculture. And next day, we should have something else here, maybe? Oh, well, let's do the next one. Rebuilding the district. The district has suffered major damage in recent years. Heavy fighting has resulted in the mass destruction of infrastructure and industry, and has killed thousands. It's time to begin investing in the rebuilding of our country. Raw materials and resources will be put to rebuilding factories and laying down new roads. Financial aid will be offered to people whose livelihoods have been destroyed, and camps set up for the various displaced peoples in our country. Hopefully, within a few months, we should have the majority of our industry operational again, and people resettled. Private relief. Foreign instructors. Equipment. Probably even better again. Uh, this is the one. Mm. Ah, screw it. We'll do all three. Why not? Actually, we might have one more there to do, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. We get one and a half every day now. That's actually awesome. Wow. This is going very well. Poverty, how are we doing? It's barely going up. We really need to focus more on poverty. Not very good for us. The Marshal and his council. The meeting table lay empty as the generals of the council sat quiet, waiting for the Marshal to... For, for the marshal. A few minutes passed, and the marshal Batov entered the room, sitting down at the head of the table. 
This will be a much different meeting, he said, making sure to face all of the other generals. Instead of worrying about our present issues, I would like to look into the future. Our political situation has since changed since we first united West Siberia, Batov said. Remnants of our enemy government in Tumen and Omsk have been dealt with, and we have stabilized our control over all of the Urals. Things have calmed down all across the military district, and our rule seems to be secure. So with our political goals handled, what should we focus on next? General Alexei Zadov spoke first. We need to prepare for war. Our neighboring rivals will not wait for us to be ready when they, before they strike. Our army size must be increased, our military production doubled, and our supply infrastructure to prepare for any invasion. A lot of fighting will be necessary to reunite Russia. It's time we start now. Thank you, Alexei, Marshal Batov said. It is true, we must put a large amount of our focus towards reuniting Russia, although we cannot ignore the situation of our people. All of our efforts cannot be put into the military, our civilian economy must be made prosperous, and poverty must be lowered before Russia can be united or unified. Until then, we will be we will wait until our moment to strike. We will be prepared when that time is right. A united Russia nears. And since we have army XP already, I'm I'm I think we'll just do this anyways. Make them all 40 combo with Oh you some leads too. There you go, cool. You guys all become forties. Just because I don't know how strong Zidana will be, so there you go. Uh you can poop them out first. There you go. And actually, before we do that, just throw them all in here. Like, we'll fix up these armies later on. That's fine. Train. Because we don't have, we don't have many divisions as they do, so let's just make our divisions better than what they currently are. That'd be good. And let's come down here too. Nice, 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 nice. And then taking inventory. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of equipment and weapons left over from the former warlord state that we conquered. While most of all of it is shoddily made, outdated, or in poor condition, most still work. Much of these rifles and other equipment is simply floating around out there unchecked and free to be used by any insurgents who want to use it. We should endeavor to locate, catalog, and store all the leftover equipment we can find and add it to our own stockpile, both for safekeeping and emergencies. The situation may never call for these weapons to be used, but it's always better to have what have and not need than to need and not have. Well, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. This happens every single time when you race for the Urals, but it is what it is. Increase investments, increase investments, yes. A new theater. Now, we could go to war with them immediately, but I kind of want to wait first. Because our guys, well, we're really out of equipment now. Look at that, that's really bad. Preparing for reconstruction. There you go. Lower by one. Go to five. Go, to, go up to five, that's fine. I'll go to stay on one, that's fine. <clears throat> our unification of West Siberia was a costly... Factories and roads and railways are all heavily damaged or destroyed in the fighting. With the enemies dealt with and with internal issues handled, we can finally make preparations to rebuild. The damage was not sparing, with cities destroyed and people starving. Our army, our economy is in shambles, barely functioning. Unemployment is abound. Our schools also lay abandoned with no funding for education. Bartering is rampant, with no real money circulating through the country. To prepare for the rebuilding of the district, the marshal has ordered for new construction jobs to begin across all West Siberia. Rebuilding the core of our cities will let us increase our reconstruction efforts even more. Hopefully by the end, West Siberia will look radically different and we will be close to recovery. Hopefully. Following the reunification of West Siberia, the economy is finally showing signs of recovery and the GDP growth has significantly slightly increased. So before we look at that, it is 5.7. Hey, 105.5. We'll take it. Increased investments. Increased investments. Yes. Unfortunately, though, we're all out of coffee. But that's okay. Sometimes it happens. Temporarily fully controlled economy. I don't want to do that one. I don't want her PP. I definitely don't want her civilian factory construction. Lowering interest rates will encourage people to spend more. Acceptable minimum wage. That's not too bad. Let's increase reconstruction efforts. We get way more construction speed. Remove no unemployment subsidies. That's going to cost us way more. Whoa, baby. Whoa, daddy. And then civilian uh, agriculture, investment machinery. Well, I guess we'll do this one first. The best and brightest. If the past thousands of years have taught us anything, it's better than better technology almost always wins, whether it be Ottoman cannons besieging Constantinople, British riflemen colonizing Africa, or a single German bomber ending World War II in one fell swoop. We've seen time and time again the advantage that better technology gives us over our enemies. Arguably, what's even more important is the effective technology that we can have on one's own nation as well. The Industrial Revolution boosted the economic output of Great Britain a hundred times over and made agricultural goods easily transportable and raised millions out of poverty. We must seek out the best and the brightest in our nation and give them all all the resources they need to bring Russia into the future. Nice. Let's pause that. Do that. Uh, just create an opponent. No, we want to get even more influence. Our current influence. Our current influence is very good. Very good. Very good. Anything down here? Nope. All we can do is this stuff yet. So we have high investments into the countries. 
thus and brightest Followed up with what? Can we do this one? Yep, we need at least increased reconstruction efforts. Reconstruction of our territories has taken longer than expected. The fighting of recent wars combined with the already critical lack of infrastructure into and thorough rural areas has made the process infinitely more slow. Over half of our expenditures so far have been exclusively towards repairing roads and other infrastructure, and we made little progress actually addressing the people's needs as a result of this. Our reconstruction efforts must be redoubled, with increased funding and manpower if we were to make a difference. Absolutely true, and taking stock. The Quartermaster walked through the warehouse, going through all the confiscated equipment captured by enemy soldiers in the unification. Guns, artillery, and even tanks were now in his hands. These would be very useful in the Third Army, he mused. Now he moved on to the more damaged items. The tank, damaged by an anti-tank gun, was but was still repairable. A truck, now this one had taken a lot of damage. Bullet holes covered the outside, seemingly more bullets than truck. Checking the inside, the stains of blood remained on the seats, formed red splotches. Perhaps this one would need a bit more work, he thought. The fighting had been brutal, he had seen it with his own eyes, but now that it was over, he was left over to pick up the pieces. The thousands of pieces, recovering what could be recovered, trashing what could not. But with these old weapons of war, new wars would be fought, hopefully with fewer bloodstains on the weapons. They were harder to remove. More guns, the better. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. Oh, we can discredit the enemy even more, 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 more. Uh, let's increase relations with the Euro League and increase relations with Orenburg. Yes, that is very good to do. Very, very good. Ah, robotics. Very nice. Good, 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 good. Let's go here. Yeah, we don't really need too much right now. You might need it in the future, so. Civilian budget boost. Keep boosting so we can spend, or not really spend more, but make more. Hey, 6.9%. Not too bad. Hey, two full lines. Not too shabby. And increase the reconstruction efforts. So for two years, we get plus 50% more construction speed, which is really nice. Boy, hurts our GDP growth, but whatever. Uh, what is this? Infantry... We lose consumer goods. Infantry equipment production cost goes down by 15%. Military factory. Agriculture does go up. Um, let's do this one. Industrial equipment. Investing in machinery. Since the collapse following the West-Russian War, our ability to research newer and more efficient manufacturing machineries and technology has been non-existent. And my apologies for about this. Let's go and grab... A better plane. There you go. <clears throat> However, with the reunification of Russia complete, we can finally begin focusing on modernizing the nation's industrial technology. Such things as basic integration of computers, more reliable and tactical or tactile machinery used in large-scale production plants, and the implementation of isostatic processing vessels should help increase our productive capacity. Nice. Better tanks, please. And since we're here, um, you're at, uh, can we duplicate you guys? There you go. Fighter wings? There you go. Actually, you all just train. Go and train for now. It's fine. And now we can increase relations, good, and increase relations, good. So they're both aligned, and eventually we should be able to add them to our sphere. So we need to get 100 more influence, and we'll basically be there. Hopefully they'll accept integration. But we'll see what happens. Nice. Um, we'll get another civvy, let's do the defense industry maybe. The civilian industry, of course, is important. The civilian industry is important for a peaceful time economy and will be necessary for rebuilding Russia. That said, there won't be a nation to rebuild if you can't arm your army. Russia still faces various threats on all sides, and an investment into our military or defense industry will ensure that our military remains powerful enough to combat these threats. With nations such as Germany, Japan, and our border, we not only do we need the best equipment, we also need as much of that equipment as possible. Which I don't want to do because it hurts the consumer goods, but we kind of need to do it immediately, so let's so get down here. Yeah, it kind of sucks. That really does kind of suck. But we do get to produce infantry equipment faster. We do get another military factory, which we do need, so. Alright, what's over here? Um, we can do all this stuff, but we are at 57, 59, so we're doing quite well, actually, so. It's only 67, so. Hey, not bad. They're receptive, huh? Launch military intervention, decrease. So we're only they're only aligned here. That's kind of weird. For the Ural. Oh, they're both aligned. They're receptive, huh? Oh, the, this is the enemies. Okay, that's the enemies. That makes more sense then. The civilian industry. Civilian industry is vital to the strength of our nation. An economy focused entirely on military production cannot function. Civilian industry provides for all the quality of life needs our people ha might have, be it toasters, plows, light bulbs, or shovels. Most importantly for the government, civilian industry helps grow the economy and provides materials with which to build more factories, such as steel, concrete, and glass. If we are to rebuild Russia, we need to invest into civilian industry so that we can produce said materials to do so. Where are we with this? We're, we're super close. Look at that. We're 100? Good. Add him to our sphere. And this one? Nice. We can add him to our sphere as well. Great! And can you do anything about these guys with these guys? Oh, exert influence. Um, I guess technically we already did. So, they're in our sphere, so we got them. 
So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> I'd like to integrate these guys, but we need a little bit more influence, which will take some time. So that's okay. Uh, land auction would be nice, more war support, but we already have a pretty good war support temporary, temporarily fully control the economy. Well, the district is entirely opposed to the planned economics and autarkic setups that communist and fascist nations preach. It has become apparent the necessity of the implementation of a war economy setup not too dissimilar to those we previously rejected. War for dominance in Russia is an inevitability, and while it's true that a planned economy is far less efficient long-term compared to a free market economy, we simply can't afford to let factory owners and industry barons squeeze the government at such a time like this. We charge our civilian factory construction by a huge amount. And we lose consumer goods factories and we lose political power. So I'm not really sure this is worth it, honestly, but whatever. And increase investments. No, we can't do it. We can't integrate them yet because we need a little bit more influence, but whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't like this one. But the resources of Siberia. No, we'll do this one. Maintaining military engineering schools. As our economy grows, more factories will be developed, construction projects started, and technical companies founded, all of which will need engineers, unfortunately. As things stand today, our education system cannot accommodate the need for engineers now, let alone what will be needed in a few years. With even our military is having trouble getting a hold of good engineers. Thus, in order to alleviate the situation, the military will be handling the construction of new civil engineering schools. These schools will be free of cost, providing the students spend four years serving once the education is complete. Then, after the four years in the military, they will be free to bring their skills back home to the civilian economy. Everybody wins. Integrate and integrate. Which they are probably not going to like, so let's do that. Let's do this. Um, how are we doing here? How is our... Well, they're looking a little better, actually. Do that just in case. We have a lot of PP again. I like it. We like it. Hopefully they say yes, because if not, that's not very good for us. Um, yeah, some of our guys looking not really good here. If that's the case, let's do this. You guys come over here. Oh, they're in our sphere anyways, but let's do it like wee. And there you go. Not a lot of guys, but that's okay. There you go. Because you guys will be focused down here. You guys will be fine probably doing this. Maybe. We'll see. And I'll keep that other infantry division there for now, too. Military Engineering School, thank you very much. Four days left. Yeah, work economy is not really great. Quality materials. Um, mechanized division. Rokosowski Military Academy is not bad. But we'll also do expand the Bureau. This Fedlosk design bureau has far and away outperformed every expectation we had of it when it was first formed. The bureau is spearheaded development on a variety of fronts, from the development of a new standard rifle to novel research on transistor comp computation and how it can improve the efficiency of our current computers. Given the immense contribution this organization has made, both to our national security and science as a whole, a raise in funding shouldn't be off the table. In fact, the vastly increased budgetary needs of the bureau as it expands and modernizes its research facilities alone should entitle it to at least a 30 or 40 percent increase in its budget. And the early accept integration. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. They know what's best for them. Great. And so does Ornberg. Great. Look at that, too. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. They know what's best for them. Great. And it looks like they have a flag of Germany there, but okay. Okay, so we don't think... Uh, these guys are looking pretty good. That's another entire army of 40s. There you go. Uh, Mom... Mom sort of? Maybe. I wonder if you're a good tank person. Svoboda. Uh, he's, what? He's politically connected, which I don't like. It won't really matter too much, I'll be honest, but still. Commando. Skirmisher. Oh, I kind of like this person. Uh, Batov is, he's got that too already, so. Uh, Mountaineer, that'd be really good. Organization first. Uh, I'll do you. There you go. Now our cost is going to go way, 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 way up. There you go. Well, there you go. Go ahead and train. These guys probably didn't like what we just did, but that's okay. I don't want to fight in the mountains, so let's come down here. You guys will help, like, hold the area down here. There you go, something like that. And now the debt has increased to 10 billion. Which makes sense, but, you know, we're kind of okay with that. Um, let's cut it down to one, then. There you go. Up oh, and there goes Africa. Goodbye, Africa. Ah, Africa. We all love Africa here. Oh, we need to get military police. We'll do that one next, because actually these guys are good for really good for suppression. Um, if we want to, we can probably get rid of this stuff. It doesn't hurt suppression, so that's not too bad. And goodbye. Oh, we have another focus we can do. Great! Expand the bureau. Did I let time go on? No, I did not. Okay. All right. The resources of Siberia. Our war economy needs resources, and thankfully we have to be sitting on one of the largest supplies of natural resources on Earth. 
The mineral value that Siberia offers is as bountiful as Siberia's large. We should work to further exploit it in order to further production of all military equipment we need. Additionally, once unification is complete and Russia will begin to ship back into a free market, we can use the resources to boost our economy by providing cheap, easy capital as we sell them to, into foreign markets. And we're out of manpower. Huh. Not good. But we have more space now. That's a case. Let's cut down on this division then. We don't need to make it then. We saved 25 guys, 3,500. Not too much, but that's okay. A lot of pee-pee. And a fair wage. For what reason do we work to unify Russia if not for the common people? Our tireless efforts have been to secure a stable and fair nation for all peoples of Russia, one in which all working men are paid their due. To that end, the government will be implementing a new fair wage law, raising the minimum wage across the nation. It is our hope that this measure will not only see wages rise, but also quality of life and purchasing power for the average citizen. Though times have changed, our commitment to the people has not. So that'll be good. Max Factory's going to say, actually go down, which is not good. What? We have resistance here? Oh, do we need... Maybe we need core some places. Okay. Do we need core these areas? We might have to. Oh, there we go. That's right. Yeah. That's my bad. 50 days kind of sucks, but whatever. I'm not going to cut down anything else for that, so... And then, on the road to recovery. Rapidly improve and a bonus to industry. Sign us up. Ah, 665 more people. Not bad. The policies of uh, investments we've made have begun to bear fruit. People are out and about on the streets and spending money and using credit. Factories for the first time in decades have begun to manufacture goods and products wholly unrelated to warfare. The streets and rail lines connecting major cities and towns no longer break off in sections or have created through them. Russians across the nation are experiencing a novel sensation, long thought forgotten. Russians are beginning to feel peace again. So, improving poverty is like my main goal here. So, it's actually looking not too bad. Four and a half a month. Oil and Surgut. It's been a lucky day for Farman Salmanov, our economic minister, doing geology work in Surgut today. He has come across an even larger oil deposit ever before found in that region. Oil is very precious to us. Fueling our tanks and our trucks with this much oil, however, we may also be able to use it for trade, gaining favorable deals with foreign powers. We should now focus on building more storage facilities for all this oil. We do not want any going to waste. More efforts will also be required to extract all the oil and fully take advantage of it. If we are successful, we won't need to worry about a fuel shortage ever again. I've found oil. That's it. I agree. Actually, really, really, really great. So now we have two and a half working at all times. Pretty good. That's pretty good, I'd say. A fair wage and on the road to recovery, please. Oh, it's going to hurt our GDP at all? Or not? No, probably get better, though. And monthly expertise will go up as well. Keep spending. 11.11 .11 billion, not great, but the Grand Russian Army. The Third Army, one of the most well-organized and equipped army units style standing in Russia, has proven its worth once again and emerged victorious from the devastating wars that ra racked West Siberia. If you want to read about improved academic base, please go right ahead. That being said, the fighting exposed some of the serious flaws in our strategic and tactical doctrines that may prove disastrous if our future enemies learn how to exploit them. Now that peace has been restored to the region, a more comprehensive re-examination and modernization of the Army's combat capabilities shall begin. It is true that we already possess a formidable force, but to allow our rivals to catch up would be in to invite disaster. Once the military strengths have been honed to a razor's edge, the Third Army will march on as the grandest army force in all of Russia, and victory will be practically guaranteed. But we don't want to become overconfident. That is disastrous, to become overconfident. We need to really focus on our guns a little bit more. We really do. So we got this to do, and we got this to do, and then we'll reunite everybody. The, uh, the eagle. The eagle, not the edge, but the eagle. Oh, do we... Oh, we have more military factories. Look at that. Oh, we core this stuff. Oh, that's good. Um, Let's do that. Let's do that. And let's do this and then that. Good. Hey, we actually have some manpower now. But not for long. The cream of the crop? We do what here? That's pretty darn good. The tank factory... Let's do land doctrine and outdated tactics. In the past, the army had relied on tactics that would not have looked out of place on the battlefields of the Second World War almost 20 years ago. These ways have proven adequate so far, as was demonstrated during the conflict that saw West Siberia united under our government. But the years are marching forward, and the times are changing faster than one would think. Countless new weapons and methods of waging war have become commonplace over the decades. We have spent resting on our laurels. If we do not act soon, our armies will be left in the dust rendered nothing more than vintage relics. The time has come to set aside the tactics of yesterday and embrace those of tomorrow. If you like to about fear and loathing LA, please go right ahead. It's different, I guess, and looking up. With all of our efforts paying to improve the economy of the district, it seems they're finally paying off. The economy has been seeing tremendous growth, and West Siberia is becoming a place of more prosperity. 
Quality of life has also improved with more housing and better jobs for the people. Schools have also been built to educate the masses. Best of all, more businesses are starting to pop up taking advantage of the growing economy. Well, this is not just good for the people, this also helps us. With a better economy, our factories are starting to reopen and new ones are even being rebuilt. It looks like the effects of industrialization are beginning to appear and we're producing more goods than ever before. Infrastructure is also seeing an improvement. New roads have been built, electricity is being provided, and railroads are being allowing the transportation of goods quickly and easily. A strong modern economy is within reach, but to truly empower the Russian economy, we must first reunite, reunite Russia. Until then, we will we will lay the foundations for an economy that will rival the largest superpowers. Goodbye, poverty. And Matai has been overthrown by the people. All right then, not bad. Well, goodbye, Matai. Matai. Whatever his name is. Hey, we got three full lines and, if this one, and another one on the quarter of the way. Only 11.5 billion. There, not bad. And the dam has been finished. Very cool. Resources, because we can't... Eh, this might be the last one we do for resources, because we're already looking extremely good, so... That's the last one for resources for now. And end outdated tactics. Foreign relations and trade. The Third Army marches forward. Sitting on the balcony of Sverdlovsk, overseeing that vast military parade below him, Marshal Batov uh, felt great regret that his commander, mentor, and friend, Konstantin Rokosovsky, could not be beside him to see the procession. The soldiers of the former Third Army, the army that Rokosovsky had led through the darkest of days and provided the springboard by which to achieve the control over Western Siberia is now that it that it now possessed were superb. The discipline and order that allowed them to stabilize the original district and defend against both revisionist and ultra-nationalist elements remained, but, but Batov knew there still had to be improvement. And the regiment of formations that marched past him, and perfectly arranged me mechanized formations that drove past, and in the experienced aerial elements that roared overhead there were, despite outward appearances, outdated tactics, insufficient recruiting standards or training, and were problems with the centralization of the command. All issues that needed to be and would be addressed, Batov would see to it. As another group of infantry passed in front of his position, in perfect echelon and with salutes offered, Batov straightened and returned his gesture. Returned the gesture. He wished again that the old marshal was here beside him, but that would not, but he would honor his friend in a way he knew would be most valued, turning his military into the most professional, capable, and politically reliable force in all of Russia. And when that army had marched from the Pacific to the German border, he knew his work was complete. Our task has only begun, and let's improve this. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We got all the PP in the world for this. We're going to use our PP to the max extent. And let's be reaching out first. Once we be firmly under our control, we can begin to participate in international politics once more. Our first test will be to establish contact with the outside world. During the Great Warlord period, Sverdlovsk was hard-pressed into getting information to and from Arkhangelsk, let alone to far-off nations like the U.S. With the region quickly stabilizing under our control, however, re-establishing contact shouldn't be any trouble at all. Should we be successful, our priority as a nation will be gaining recognition on the world stage, perhaps even as to be recognized as a legitimate successor state to Russia and or the Soviet Union. Additionally, we should endeavor to begin trade negotiations with these larger powers such as the U.S. and Japan, as well as our neighbors. Free infrastructure, basically, at the cost of a little bit of PP. Not bad. I do apologize for reading quickly. It just it happens every episode, just because I like reading quickly. I like to move quickly through my head and stuff like that. Decrease PP. Eh, that stuff is okay. We don't really need to do that. <clears throat> we could, though. Shield of the people is not bad. Oh, that's this one. Centralized command. Our military is blessed with the finest officer corps Russia has to offer, but with our current command structure, their talents are needlessly restrained. To better utilize their great abilities, our high command has proposed a broad centralization of the command chain to cut down on needless red tape and allow for orders to be carried down with less hassle. With increased control over the forces, our generals can more effectively guide the military's gradual transition into a highly professional fighting force, worthy of carrying out the eventual reunification of Russia. Pretty good idea. Pretty darn good. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Yes. Welfare programs, construction, machinery, poverty, professionalism. Nice. And that's why we don't spend our PP here. But maybe we'll do it later. Uh, please improve society as much as possible. Uh, as fast as possible as well. So now we're down to three and one. Huh. Well, that's not great. The Department of Foreign Affairs. For the unification of Western Siberia. Many foreign powers have become interested in our new nation. A place was needed to conduct relations with other powers. And Batov has announced today the construction of foreign affairs office in Svedlovsk. Many nations outside the German sphere are taking a liking to a strong independent Russia, and may be interested in providing us with limited aid and recognition. We have also many resources other nations may want, so the Foreign Affairs Office will also work in conducting trade. However, our rivals across the border are also interested in having relations with these foreign powers. We may have to compete for aid, though we are con confident in our abilities to establish functional relations with all those who hold an interest in us. It's about time we made friends, and it's always good to have friends. Always, always good. Um, honestly, we don't really do that one either. Daily political power gain, you lose political power to get some political power. You get stability, but we're already pretty good on stability, so there'd be no point to do that. Uh, let's shoot the people. 
defending the people of Russia from the countless harm they could potentially encounter, and this cruel warlord era was one of the defining moments that brought our state into existence in the first place. Now that we control a much larger portion of this broken country than before, this noble mission has only grown ever more important since those pe days in the wake of the West Siberian People's Republic collapse. To that end, we must never forget our original mission and work to ensure that our people remain safe no matter how bad the going gets. Fortifications will be constructed in our home territories to help deter potential invaders, and a large range of improvements to our, def our offensive strategies have already been proposed in the interest of minimizing civilian suffering. Spend. Please. Let's go. Alright, so where was that? Oh, do we had an option about this stuff or something? Hmm. Oh, is it still going? No, pause it. Cool. Not bad. All this stuff is good. We can, we're going to wait on that. Get some better ch planes. I like that. And shoot other people. Followed up with what? Connections? Oh, let's see this one. Show them our worth. Our nation may be small, but we have a lot of offer nations willing to trade with us. Our industrial capacity is limited and our capital reserves small. We happen to have one of the greatest abundance of cheap natural resources on the continent, primarily oil extracted from this far north in Siberia. We should work to get these raw materials into foreign markets at cheap prices, encouraging the purchase and driving further investment into Russia. If we're successful, managing to find purchasers abroad for our national wealth, we may even be able to parlay our basic trade relationship into a more comprehensive economic agreement. Because we want more foreign trade. There you go. Do this one too. Good, 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 good. We will be masters of the air. Of course, we do have the free aviators on our side, too, but still. Oh, is it too much here? That's fine. We'll send you guys somewhere else, maybe. Okay, there's nowhere else we can build. Just send you. Okay, we can do that one. We can spend a little bit of time doing that one first. Shield of the people and show them our wealth. Contact Rome. That'll be kind of cool. Better research facilities. If you like to about that, please go right ahead. There you go. Cool. Followed up with the Legacy of the Third Army, maintaining stuff. Eh, that stuff's not bad. Promote new officers. This stuff is all okay. Not bad. Eh, data cohesion costs more, though. Yeah, let's do Dragonos Connections. Why not? Though we might harbor some personal objections against Yevgeny Dragunov and his many past dealings with our enemies, there's no denying the utility of his impressive array of foreign contacts and connections, many of which he has retained since Zotaus fell. We should call him Dragunov and see if he can come to a mutually beneficial agreement. We will drop any and all charges against him from the last time as an arms dealer and leader of Zotaus, and he will help us breach into new markets and set up trade agreements through his various foreign contacts, a win-win situation. Very good. I've got enough anti tank now. We need way more artillery. We're actually looking really good on everything else here. Um, Here we go. We need that one. I don't want to lower that one too much. Tanks, I don't really want to lower that either. Just because we're going to need 40 combo with tanks, but it is what it is. You know. Hey, we actually have a little bit of liquid reserves. There you go. Not going to do much. Wow, we have a lot of debt now. Alright, follow it up with tapping the market. We need access to more markets. Not only do we want to be able to sell our wares and natural resources, but we also want to be able to tap on foreign goods and investment. We will need to front an all-out diplomatic assault. We have diplomats in every nation in Central Asia, India, Africa, South America, and anywhere else with an easily accessible market. We will attempt to create trade agreements, economic treaties, and lower tariffs with as many nations that will let us as possible. Let the money flow. Let it flow. Flow, flow, flow. Finally, working on gun stuff. <clears throat> but it is 68. Halfway through 68, my friends. Very good. Too much debt. Into the world might, might not be too bad either. You get more political power and authoritarian democracy, but we're doing pretty good. But tapping the market would be even better. A lucrative offer. Trade has always been a challenge for us since the beginning of the unification. No easy ports to reach or neighbors willing to trade means a lot of effort has to be put into reaching simple trade deals that aren't always beneficial towards us. Costs have continued to rise for many important goods in both of our civilian and military economies or economics, and we're importing much more than we are exporting. Dragunov seems to notice our plan is willing to use his connections to create more opportunities for us, leader of the Warlord State Zotelis, until joining our government. He was a prime businessman, trading weapons in across the Warlord state lands, state lands, wastelands. Using these connections, Dragunov will be able to reach places far or near, and his charisma will be very useful for trade negotiations. Dragunov has also generously offered to serve in a government in addition to using his contacts. A man like him could become a very savvy minister and leadership. What's not to trust? Take him up on his offer, but keep him away from a government? Agree and offer him a position. Um, I want to say, maybe for now, ooh, I mean, one place Yeltsin, maybe we'll go agree and offer him a position. Take him up with his offer, but keep him away from our government. Hmm. I want to play Yeltsin, maybe I want to have him as part of our government. Eh, I'll just run. Give him away. Cool. And what are we going to do next? Let's see the third army. We could do that one. Creates a tank brigade. And this is all blueprints and mostly, so 
I'm going to contact Rome, maybe. The Italians are in control with one of the largest single markets on Earth. Their empire, stretching from bountiful Italy to the oil-rich Arabia, <clears throat> to the deserts of Egypt, has some of the greatest market potential on Earth, and not to mention the massive consumer base of control. It would be foolish to not at least attempt to get a foot in the door. We will send a delegation to Rome to establish diplomatic relations, and then attempt to begin negotiating trade. Should all go well, we will have a new trading partner and access to the Italian financial institutions, which will be a great, great thing. Hey, we're actually building on infrastructure, too. Not bad. But civvies first. Can we build actually any more civvies? Yes, we can. Okay, that's good. Serbia sides with the Germans. All right. So be it. So be it. And drop gallons. Or drop, drop tanks. Yes, please. Contact Rome. See how Scandinavia. Scandinavia is a region intrinsically linked with Russia. Not only have we shared a border with the region for centuries, but our impact with each other's politics and culture has been immense. Today, although Russia lies in ruins, Scandinavia has sailed on through the 40s and 50s mostly intact, bar barring Norway's conquest. Both Finland and Sweden have managed to break into both American and German markets and have benefited greatly. If we can establish trade relations with Scandinavia, we might too be able to reap the rewards of their unique situation. If you liked it about this, please go right ahead. Interest rates will decrease slightly. Okay, cool. Get some more dockyards. West Siberian trade seems like a pretty good thing to get. And keep spending more money. So we get some more things done and accomplished. Very nice. And we have 39 divisions of infantry. And 7 divisions. Well, I guess 40 divisions of infantry, actually. 40 divisions. Very nice. Followed up with... Approach the Eagle. The U.S. of A. is one of the most foremost powers on the face of the Earth, rivaling both Japan and Germany in terms of influence and military strength. Given Russia's precarious situation between the latter two powers, being on both their borders, sharing the two largest land borders with both superpowers of any nation on the planet, it follows that the U.S. would have a vested interest in a continued security and prosperity. Therefore, we should endeavor to endear ourselves to Washington, if for no other reason than to open the door for possible future agreements. Italy accepts us. Our message to Italy has been answered, and they've agreed to our proposal. Trade between our two nations will soon begin, and Italy is already recognized our country on the world stage. Our industries are preparing to export oil to Italy now with our oil company Gazprom, partnering with ENI. Hopefully this partnership should break through the problems of trading with a distant Italy, seeing how problems of our goods will reach them on the horizon. This deal doesn't just come with free trade between us, though. As part of it, we will need to invite ENI into our country to oversee oil extraction. This may give the Italians more power over our oil deposits than we'd like, but it's worth it. We need as many trade partners as we can get. Italian oil expertise on our side. Great. But we... Oh, we got... Oh. More conservative democracy. And we still have authoritarian socialism here, but... Oh, well. It is what it is. Nice. Keep improving ourselves. 40 full fatty divisions. We love it. And, of course, once we get this other set here, we should do okay as well, so... Sock in turn. Alright. And then establish a consulate. Which would be nice. Happy September. Happy, happy September. Establish consulates. Our initial meetings with the U.S. went well. They seemed respect receptive enough to our delegation, and we managed to fit in some preliminary talks on what their form of support of our nation might take if they were to aid us. Given the reasonable success our venture has had, we should request that we be allowed to establish a consulate in Washington. This consulate could act as a venue through which we might negotiate economic and military pacts with the government of the U.S. and establish some less than official context in North America. Maybe even Mexico. Look at all this. Oh, oh wait. We want to fish this stuff up first, probably. There you go. Basic jet cast, very nice. External fuel tanks, yes please. Well, we can't probably build shippies. Oh, modeling? Ah, uh, England. We've had a lot of England before. Not as much as I'd like, but we'll get there. And then, into the world. More authoritarian democracy, yes please. <clears throat> and happy October, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great month. Oh, there goes Borman doing his balding man stuff, response to the USA. We received a message from the Americans, and they've accepted our proposal. They recognize our control over West Siberia and are open to re trade relations, finally giving us a reliable partner to trade with. It's been a struggle to trade as we have limited access to the outside world, and our neighbors are not exactly friendly towards trading with us. This should hopefully open up access to more resources for military and civilian goods, as well as improve our standing with Americans. Perhaps we could deepen our ties with even more in the future? Thank you, America. Look at this. So look at this. That's not bad. That's why we want to do this. More political power, resource efficiency gain, consumer goods factors, resources to market, trade deal opinion factor. Great. And into the world. 
We have made great progress in bringing our nation under the world stage. Not only have we gained recognition in the eyes of several nations abroad, but we have also strengthened our economic relations and overall strength as a, as a nation in Russia. Our path to unification will be greatly eased by the connections we have now established, and the greater ec Russian economy will surely be stronger for efforts in opening up new markets. The world watches as a new power arises in Russia. Let us not disappoint. Get even more political power that we don't really need, but get more stability, which we, I guess, don't really need either. Huh, we have medium taxes. Combat roles, state-controlled trade unions, elite voting, equal rights. And poverty's still pretty bad, but we're working on it, my friends. Oh, and there goes those guys as well. Diplomatic success. We have good news. The Americans said yes to establishing a consulate. This brings the two nations even closer together and gives us even more options for diplomacy in the future. With an office in Washington, a firm connection between us has been created. This consulate will also facilitate trade between our countries, giving the Americans more access to our resources and us more access to theirs. It seems this has been a very good deal for both of us, so hopefully our relationship will only continue to grow. Time to move into Washington. This failed little tank factory. The factory is one of the largest tank factories still in operation in Russia, rivaled only by the Krasnoya Slaromovo factory to the west. Unfortunately, the factory has suffered much damage from the dreadful, dreaded Lutwaffe and the cruel bombing raids, and a large portion of this damage is gone without repair. The stories state that the factory currently exists as in severely crippling its output, and something must be done if we wish to build a sizable tank force for the Red Army. Not only will the factory be repaired, but ambitious plans have been drawn up to expand the factories as well beyond its original capabilities. Should these plans be put into motion, the factory will find new life, and our fact military will be finally bolstered with a new fearsome tank fleet with which to brush aside the enemies of Russia as well as quality materials. What good is a tank if we cannot even withstand the most basic of modern anti-tank weaponry? The field of anti-tank munitions, munitions has advanced far while Russia has been stuck in this mess, and much of these new weapons have rendered our armored forces completely helpless should our enemies begin to employ them. Luckily, there may be a stopgap solution while better tank designs are considered. By improving the quality of the metals our tanks are produced with, we may be able to increase their effectiveness against anti-tank weaponry. Regrettably, our current force is almost relying on vintage designs from the last decade, but with newly available quality metals and a little creativity, we can make additions to our tanks' armor layout that can enhance their survivability and keep them in the fight. But that's going to end it for us here today, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will battle for all of Western Russia, and maybe even the rest of the whole of Siberia. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.